Hi folks, this is AP Biofun with Dr. D, part three of a tale made of biomolecules, how structure determines function. And in this video, we're gonna talk about sugars and carbs. Sugar, 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 sugar. Who does not like sugar? Okay, most names for sugars end in O's, sucrose, glucose, ribose. Sugars are classified by the number of carbons. If they're six, they're called hexoses, like glucose. If they're five, they're called pentoses, like ribose. If they're three, they're trioses, like glyceraldehyde. Now you're not to remember any of this. The functional groups that are present in sugars determine their function. As we saw in the first video, there was a difference between glucose, galactose, and fructose. Well, it turns out that both, all three of them, glucose, galactose, and fructose have the same functional groups. They have hydroxyl groups, but the hydroxyl groups are in different positions, and they have carbonyl functional groups, except that glucose and galactose are aldoses because they have aldehyde group variety of the carbonyl group. So their C double bond O is at the end of the molecule, Whereas fructose is a ketose, it's a ketone. It has a ketone functional group. So the carbonyl group is of the ketone variety. The C double bond O is in the middle of the molecule. Now five and six carbon sugars tend to form rings in solution. So you take the ring form and it kind of folds on itself and forms a ring structure. Now, this is the full ring structure here. To the very right is an abbreviated ring structure. The carbons are numbered. Now, where in biology will you find solutions? Of course, in cells. So in cells, most sugars are in ring form. Now, the forms you're gonna see are really the abbreviated forms. In them, we do not write out the carbon atoms. So you're gonna have to assume that there's a carbon whenever two lines meet at an angle. The carbons in the rings are numbered, and this will be important later. Numbering always starts at the oxygen and it goes clockwise. So the numbering starts at oxygen and goes clockwise. So you can see here's the oxygen and clockwise one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. So molecular structure determines function. The common theme, correct? In starch and in cellulose, starch and cellulose are polysaccharides, they're polymers of glucose. They are both polymers of glucose, yet they have very different structure and very different properties and very different functions because of those different properties. In starch, we have something we call alpha glucose. In cellulose, we have beta glucose. So what are alpha and beta glucose? In solution, the ring form is in equilibrium with the linear form. So it goes back and forth. And the linear form can fold one of two ways. It can fold this way, like in alpha glucose, or it can fold that way, like in beta glucose. So what is the difference? If you think of the ring structure as a sheet of paper, that's a plane. In alpha glucose, the hydroxyl group on the first carbon points downwards. In beta glucose, it points upwards. And that's the only difference between alpha and beta glucose. They're isomers of glucose. But if you build your polymer with alpha glucose, that polymer will have completely different properties than a polymer built out of beta glucose. So alpha glucose is used in starch. There is a one four linkage of alpha glucose monomers. That means the covalent bond is formed between the first carbon of one monomer and the fourth carbon of the next. One, four, one, four. The same is true for cellulose, except in this case, we're using beta glucose monomers. And because we're using beta, I want you to notice how the glucose monomers are flip-flopped. So each second glucose monomer is flipped 
as compared to the previous one. So polysaccharides really are long-term energy storage, like starch and glycogen. Starch and glycogen are a form that animals use, sorry, animals use glycogen, plants use starch to store energy in the long term. Amylose and amylopectin are two different forms of starch, and we encountered amylose and the enzyme that degrades it, amylase, in our experimental design worksheet, if you remember. So they're composed of, um, amylose is composed of unbranched chains of glucose monomers, whereas amylopectin is branched chains. So that's the only difference between them. Because of the way the subunits are joined though, the glucose chains have a helical structure. Glycogen, which is what we use, animals use to, for energy storage, is very, very similar to amylopectin and is highly branched. Cellulose is not used for long-term energy storage. Cellulose is used for structure. Cellulose makes up, makes up a large portion of plants' cell walls. So it provides structure and support. In cellulose, the glucose monomers are linked in an unbranched chain by beta 1,4 glycosidic linkages. That means we're using beta glucose, not alpha. Because of the way of the glucose subunits are joined, every glucose monomer is flipped relative to the next one, resulting in a linear fibrous structure. So we built long, and very strong fibers this way. Starch versus cellulose. Starch is easy to digest by us. We have the enzymes such as amylase that can recognize the particular bond between alpha glucose monomers and break it and turn starch into glucose. Cellulose is hard to digest. We do not have the enzyme that is capable of recognizing the beta glucose covalent bonds in starch. And for that reason, we cannot digest cellulose. The only organisms that can digest cellulose because they have the enzymes needed for that are bacteria, certain types of bacteria. So cellulose is really the most abundant organic compound on earth, but animals cannot digest it. So herbivores, those are animals that live exclusively on a plant-based diet, have evolved a mechanism to digest cellulose. So they live in symbiosis with bacteria that can digest it. Most carnivores have not, and for that reason, they need to eat meat to get their energy and nutrients, okay? So a cow can digest cellulose very, very well. So it doesn't need to eat other sugars. A gorilla can digest cellulose very well. So it must add another sugar source, like fruit, to its diet. And what is the difference, really? The difference is the type of bacteria that can live in our intestines, in our digestive system. So cows have bacteria that can fully digest cellulose. And they live in symbiosis with the cow. The bacteria get some nutrients out of the cow and helps the cow digest cellulose, and now the cow can extract energy from cellulose. We do not have such rich bacteria, so we can only partially digest cellulose and partially extract energy from cellulose. So we need to eat fruit. We need to have other sources of sugar and other sources of protein, so we also eat meat. We're omnivores. Now, look at this cube. It has the formula for glucose, C6H12O6. So the car is called cube. Therefore, this is a giant sugar cube. And this is the end of our lesson on carbohydrates. See you next time.